Greetings, I'm Aetherno, and how many of you are aware that certain albums and movies have been known to sync up with one another? Like, how many of you know that Dark Side of the Moon syncs up with basically every movie ever made? A while back, I was scrolling through my iTunes library with Green Day on my mind, specifically their 2009 album, 21st Century Breakdown, when I started fixating on the runtime of an hour and nine minutes. Which got me thinking about the runtime of the Bionicle movies for whichever reason, specifically my favorite, Legends of Metro Nui. So I went to the YouTube upload of the movie, only to find out that it was a little too long. But that was including the credits. So I skipped straight to the end and found out that the film almost had the exact same runtime as the album. So I wondered, could these two completely different pieces of media released five years apart sync up? And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that certain songs and certain scenes easily could. Well, I tried it three times, once with four others, and what were the results? Well, in this video, I'll be going track by track, relaying what synced up with what, and at the very end, I'll tell you how you at home can replicate my results. Let's get into it. Song of the Century only had the opening narration to sync up to, and it synced up about as well as it could. Next track. Alright, this is where things get interesting. The title track kicks in right around the end of the opening logo with the titular dun dun riff. Is it a riff? I'm gonna call it a riff. Playing right as Lee Kong gathers the Toa Stones. And the song really breaks in when Nidiki tosses the large rock and with Lee Kong's movements being on beat with the song. Various cuts, movements, and other impacts are on beat with the song, which is something of a running theme throughout. And when Lee Khan is going around Metro Nui, the second verse starts right after Nokama's title card appears. Lee Khan leaves Ono Metro right as the second part of the song kicks in, and Matao's bike scene just fits really well with that bit. Vakama breaks the test Vahi right as the song changes tempo again, and right after the song ends, there is just enough of a pause before the next track for Lee Khan to say, you lost the right to call me brother long ago. Another thing I'd like to mention is how well the line, I never made it as a working class hero, fits with this opening scene, since a lot of the Matoran worked blue collar jobs and Lee Khan gave them an opportunity to become Toa. This one's a bit on the nose, but Know Your Enemy plays over the scene where Lee Khan is fighting the two Dark Hunters. Diki's face appearing in the hyper close-up is on beat. However, what I found most notable is that the main guitar solo during the bridge plays when Vakama is barreling down the pipes in Tometru right after he snaps out of his first vision, and him hitting the wall is also on beat. Putting it on the vision, the flashbacks at the start of the vision are generally on beat. Even after he's snapped out of the vision and out of the pipes, him screaming no fits with the song continues over the scenes where Vakama and Duma are having a conversation, which also fits thematically as Lee Khan knows the enemy, but Vakama doesn't. Vakama inspecting the stone also fits well, and the song ends around the time when Duma shows up. Now thematically, Viva La Gloria doesn't really fit that well, but that's not what really matters. This one plays over the scenes where the six Matoran eventually become Toa. And at the top of the song, Vakama's hand movements just work really well with the piano. Same with Duma moving around. When the scene transitioned from the Great Forge to the Great Temple, there's a lot of greats, the birds flying fit as well as other scene cuts. When the piano ballad stops and Billy Joe Armstrong screams Gloria, it cuts to Nokama walking down the stairs. The same could be said about when Nuju transforms into a Toa later on, as well as Anoa placing the stone in the slot. And of course, general body movements and cuts are on time. Once again, general body movements, scene transitions, and also the overall mood of the song just fits really well for the scenes. Matau hitting the wall was on beat, and the same could be said about Nuju putting his ice picks into the iceberg, and Winua pushing past the other Toa. The line, cast a stone and throw a brick, is said right as it cuts to Anua, a Toa of stone, retrieving his great disc, and Nuju landing on the iceberg was on beat. The same couldn't really be said for Matau, as his big collision was off by only about a second. Finally, when the camera cuts to the Vaki, it's on beat, the Toa's big power walk just fit well with the music, and Matau yelling hello Metru Nui was also on beat. This all leads us to Christian's Inferno. Kicking us off, we have Duma laughing, just fitting with the song, and the Toba giving Vakama the great discs was also on beat. However, when the pillars in the Colosseum start moving in waves, the overall energy of the song just fits that scene really well coupled with the general cuts and movements being on time, as they should be. As for Matau getting abused, yeah, suffice to say, that works. The last thing of note, Duma yelling stop is on time. Last Night on Earth is where things get a little iffy, since it plays over the scenes where the Toa are getting sucked into this 
big vortex. This, this song is much more slower paced than Christian's Inferno is. But certain things still worked. Mainly Anawa walking, no cam- no camera? No camera. No kia. Okama grabbing Vakama, being on beat, Vakama putting the great disc back, all the Vaki falling into the vortex, fitting visually. And to cap things off, the Dark Hunters transforming into flight mode, which other than looking f***ing stupid, was on beat. And so was Matao's belly flop into the shoot system. Next act of the album. F*** you. kick things off, Kongu dangling just fit the swing tempo of East Jesus Nowhere. And the engine stopping was also on time. Both Matau and the shipping container falling out of the chute system, as well as Lee Kong coming out of the shadows, were on beat with the song. Vakama's vision also synced up with the line, A Fire Burns Today, playing as Lee Kong's spirit star goes across the sky. Right at the end, in the background, Matau's wings folding up was also on beat. Also goes without saying that general character movements and camera cuts were on beat as well. The song also has thematic ties as well. The song discusses the hypocrisy of organized religion and how it can rip people's individuality away. And when put under a microscope, uh, it's safe to say that Metro Nui is indeed a theocracy, with a hint of authoritarianism under Makuta's rule. I think I can stop saying that general character movements and camera cuts are on time because that pretty much goes for all the songs. Vakama's vision of the Matoran Spheres doesn't just sync up well, uh, but it also stops on beat when he snaps back to reality. Even him opening the pod is on beat. However, either snapping back or him opening the pod might not have been on beat. I was taking notes during this point. Oh, and Matthau screams hello as the song fades out. This one plays over the scenes in Pometru. Krekka's blast impacts are on beat, as well as the general energy and feel of the song just works great with the fight. Also, it's notable that this is the part of the film where Nokama learns her mask power during the song called Last of the American Girls. I know this one's kind of low-hanging fruit, like, you know, know your enemy is, but I don't care. Other than that, the scene where she does learn her mask power just syncs up really well. That and Vakama and Matau entering the trench also syncs up generally well. Murder City. Well, for starters, there's the title. However, what's most notable is that the line, I'm wide awake after the riots, happens as the three Toa are riding the Kikinalos during the sunrise. Other than that, the usual, Nuju picking up a rock, Winua getting hit by the boulder on his head, Anawa laughing, those are what stood out to me. The first thing that worked was Winua sitting down, sinking with the piano as everything should. Same with Nuju activating his mask power and the cut to Matau being on time. And the way the kick and all will roar and move is on beat. Another thing I'd like to point out is that this song plays mainly over the scenes where the three main Toa are on the run with a main recurring line being run away. That's kind of cool. For Restless Heart Syndrome, the first thing I noticed outside of the usual suspects was the Nevox movements syncing up. And Makuta putting on Duma's mask over his own, other than being really weird, that was also on beat. The line, you'll never know what will be waiting outside, plays over the scene where Renua activates his mask of night vision for the first time. The bridge guitar breakdown starts right as it cuts to the scene before Lee Khan takes his helmet off to reveal that it's actually him. And the scene of Vakama acting all sad and depressed plays over the line, I am my own worst enemy. Before I get too deep into this, the entire Horseshoes and Hand Grenades act of the album plays over the third act of the film, which works scarily well because pretty much all of them happen all at once. As for the song of the same name, kicking things off, we have Vakama realizing Makuta is Duma being on time with the guitars. Same with the Vaki Stampede Earthquake. Minua drilling the wall, the Vaki breaking in, the Matoran procession to the Coliseum also all synced up. The line, I'm not f***ing around, plays right as it cuts to Duma before he reveals he's Makuta. And the lyric, do you know how hard I hit, plays right after Makuta causes the great cataclysm. This 
Static Age starts out with Makuta laughing before the guitars come in, with Makuta unleashing his power and the lightning strikes occasionally being on beat with the song. The line, I can't see a thing in the video, is played right before Winua uses his mask power to see right through the floor. Nadiki attacking, the Dark Hunters being grabbed, the vessel landing in the water, the Vaki leaving, the boat surfacing, the Kama's vision, all happen on beat with the song. Other than giving me Transformers 2 flashbacks, 21 Guns worked pretty well, especially the overall tone and atmosphere fitting the scenes. More on that later. Speaking of flashbacks, the flashbacks in Vakama's vision are on beat, with Lee Khan speaking right as the lyrics begin. Kuda landing on the ground is on beat, so is Anawa jumping, Nuju hitting his head, the capsules falling into the ocean, and Vakama flying with the help of Nuju, those are all on beat. When Vakama uses the Vahi, the cut is on time. I think my notes just say cut to Vakama's on time, so that could have been anything. However, what really stuck out to me was how well Lee Khan's death synced up and how well it worked with the song. The post bridge was mainly what played over the character's death. A couple of the lyrics being more of a refrain from the rest of the song, it really fits the tone and atmosphere of Lee Khan dying. And Vakama wincing just as Lee Khan died synced up with the song. For American Eulogy, Vakama activating his mask happens during the Song of the Century reprise. And the Mask of Time being knocked right out of Makuta's hands happens right as Mask Hysteria kicks in. The music itself just fits the atmosphere with the energy and stakes of the fight. With Makuta turning around and Vakama walking forward also syncing up. With the song starting to break down into its Morse code insanity right as Makuta is defeated on the side of the rocks, leading us to the final track. See the light. The intro plays over the Toa Metru reassembling to seal away Makuta, which kind of ties back to the beginning with Lee Kong gathering the stones as the same riff plays, as well as the entire well working thematically for the ending of the movie. The line, and I need to know what's worth the fight, is sung over Vakama turning around looking back at the city as he carries a Matoran sphere. The line, I don't want to lose my sight, plays as it cuts to Jawler with the broken mask, and Vakama pulling out Lee Kong's how is on beat. The mask morphing to look like a regular how is also on time, and finally the Unity Duty Destiny logo comes out with the closing riff, ending whatever the hell this is. So I know what you're thinking, this is insane, how can I try this at home? Well, I myself personally use the YouTube version of the movie, however this runs into the issue of ads, which is why I decided to download the video through some means I don't want to talk about. Anyways, if you want to do the same with the YouTube version, anyways, if you want to do the same with the YouTube version, um, I'm specifying because this matters. You'll have to start 21st Century Breakdown 29 seconds into the movie. Let's say you don't want to have to download the video or use some other means, and instead you want to use something like BioMedia Project. Well, that's easier said than done because that version is slightly longer by about 14 seconds. Because for every reason, they decided to include the Lego logo at the beginning of the movie on that version. So after downloading that version and putting it into an editing software and cutting it right where 29 seconds would be, I found out that you'd have to start 21st Century Breakdown 43 seconds in if you want to use the Biomedia Project version. This also can work, goes for the, uh, the DVD version as well. Fortunately, I did not run any of my tests using the Biomedia Project version, so if someone out there wants to do it, uh, go ahead. Something else I'd like to mention is that I remember my results on the second time I did the sync up being ever so slightly different. These are, I'm moving my computer into frame because I don't want to have to memorize this a billion times and my battery's dying. Matteo belly flopping and the shoots being offbeat, the intro riff for 21st Century Breakdown playing over the opening logo, Lee Con taking the, his helmet off being on time with the guitar solo in the bridge of Restless Heart Syndrome. There are probably a few I don't remember, but those are the ones I can remember off the top of my head. Hell, these might not even be differences, I might just be remembering it wrong. So this, so was this all intentional? No. No, this was not all intentional. Uh, there's no way that a directive DVD movie designed to promote a toy line from 2004 was at all intended to sync up with this album from 2009. Yeah, it's there's no there's no way any of this was intentional. Although Legends of Metronui like and like the themes of 21st Century Breakdown kind of fit because I've noticed Legends of Metronui is an oddly political story. I mean, for the target demographic, I mean. Unless, like, something happened in the U.S. that year, you know, like an election, which, you know, did happen in the United States in 2004. It might have subtly influenced the writers. 
uh, but I, I doubt there was anything that was intentional. I just think this is kind of cool. And I might be the only one who sees this. Like, if, like if you decide to test it at home, um, I, I might be losing my f***ing mind. Who knows? There isn't really much I have left to say about this other than I think this is really damn cool. And I don't know if I was the first person to figure this out. I might have been. But if I am, that's cool. That's about it. And uh, until next time, see you around.